forgot how to do this. It's been so long. <laughs> he's, he's dying of COVID. What is wrong with your voice and face and general demeanor? What's wrong with my face? My Just face play, looks great. Play the jingle so we can start the episode. All right, here we go. Wild times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo! Oh, yeah. It's here. We're doing it. Riverside. Not in the studio, unfortunately. Wild Times, episode number 80. It's like a it's like a midday episode. We don't do those very often. No. Is that why I sound things. like I have a uh, like I have a COVID sinus infection? You're a mess. You're a disaster. We're gonna hope that you talk as little as possible on this episode. You bring okay. nothing to the table. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Fair uh, enough. Anyway, this is the Wild Times, episode number 80. That means there are 79 other awesome episodes, some in a studio, some eating Taco Bell, some on Riverside, yep. some in my living room. Um, it's all over the place. It's a good time. It's lots of fun. It's the greatest show on the air. Arguably the number one show in the world, depends who you argue with. Um, number, what was it, Patrick? 14 show in Algeria or something like that? I mean, that's old no. news, man. No, we were number four, the number four comedy show in Algeria a month ago. Yeah. I bet we're up to three by now. Woo! Oh, yeah. yeah. I am your Out host, Forrest Galante. I am the broologist. Joining me is the lovely platted lumber sexual Patrick DeLuca, the bro yes, producer. Sir. How are you? Good. We missed a week. It's it's back. We we we'd always said from the beginning, after seventy nine weeks, we're gonna take a one week break and go to Costa yeah. Rica. And I that is what my drink. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we did. It's happy <laughs> uh, I'm happy to be back. Let's my get into it. My liver hurts. My liver hurts from it. Um, and as always, the amorphous blob that is our croaky voiced, uh, intellectual of the pod, if you will, the professor himself, Retep. How are you, Retep? I'm good. Uh, it's a little jarring that Pat is like hulking in front of the camera. He's so much bigger than the two of us on the camera that I, uh, I'm kind of scared. I like it. Your hat is dated. Do you know that? You're, it's like, it's like you're wearing an NSYNC hat right now. What, Baby Yoda, what does your hat even say? Variant Training Lab, because I work out, bro. Oh, okay. Um, so he's, he's promoting things on the podcast without approval, by the way, bro producer. That's oh yeah. shit, semi accurate. We're gonna have to we're gonna uh, have to put a blur over that. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be time. blurred, and I'm gonna blur his mouth and bleep it when he just said the name. Catch it, <laughs> catch it. Um, all right, well we're back. We just blur his whole head. Do it. That'll take we ages. We Costa Rica, <laughs> and it's a big head. Um, <laughs> and boy, there was a lot of fun to be had. It was Mitchell's bachelor party. Uh, there was a little bit of alcohol involved, a lot of shenanigans. Um, yeah, it was a good time, right? Yeah, I mean, Mitch, Mitch Long, friend of the show, camera guy, and buddy on Extinct or Alive. Uh, oh, is he featured in your new show, Forrest? Uh, not as much, but occasionally, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get into that because nice. you premiered yesterday on Discovery yep. Plus. Yep, but let's let's talk about Costa Rica. Let's talk about let's talk about the first night. The first night. Oh, the first yeah. night was it was a treat. So so we get in right. We land. We get, we land in San Jose. We take the the like tour bus. It takes us to like seven p.m. Not tour bus. We had like a private bus to get to the rental house. We get there and the house is freaking rad. It's this big house, swimming pool overlooking the ocean, Costa Rica. We're like, this is amazing. But it's in the middle of nowhere, right? It's like it's it's like no, it take thirty minutes from there to town, right? So I talk to the guy who's setting everything up, and I'm like, hey, look, like we don't have a rental car, you know. I've been been to this part of Costa Rica before. Can we get some golf carts? He's like, yeah, no problem. You know, golf carts will get you to the store that's down the road. And the only rule is don't take the golf carts on the highway. And I'm like, of course. The last yeah. thing we would do is take golf carts <laughs> on a highway. So he's like, great, no problem. I'll have two golf carts here in thirty minutes. 30 minutes later, two golf carts show up, start playing some beer pong, some beer die, all those kind of games. About 9 p.m. rolls around, and we're like, look, we got to get out of this house. Like, we just got to Costa Rica. We kind of spend the night here. So (laughs) we get in the golf carts, and uh, and everybody, I'm the only one who's been to that region before, and everybody's like, well, where are we going? I'm like, we're going to Hako. And, like, I think JQ Googles it on his phone, and he's like, wait, that's like six miles down the highway. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, how else do you get there? He's like, well, he said, don't take the golf carts. I'm like, shut up, get in the golf carts. Everybody's like, no, no, no. I'm like, shut up, get in the golf carts. So we get in the golf yeah. carts. I'm driving one. Johnny's driving the other. And we're racing. And of it's course. just two guys racing golf carts down these side roads of Costa Rica. And 
Johnny nearly rolls one of them. I mean, it's just like it's just like this huge thing. We get to the highway, and I'm like, all right, follow me. Just merge onto a highway that is pretty similar to the 101. Cars are beeping at us. Lights are flashing. And I'm like, screw it. Here we go. Like 12 miles an hour down the highway. Are you driving in the shoulder or in the lane? It's like half and half. There's no real shoulder on a Costa Rican highway. So okay. it's just like the, the one and a half foot of concrete off, off the sideline. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, so we're driving. Cars are hooting. Uh, it takes us like when we're still racing, <laughs> by the way. It takes us like 20 minutes, 30 minutes to, of highway time to get to Ugh. town. Nightmarish. And, and we're like, all right, we made it. Like, no cops, nothing. We're solid. And uh, so we pull off. We're getting into Hako. Hako is just this wild place, right? And yeah. as we pull off into Hako, the heavens open up, and it just starts dumping. I mean, torrential rain downpour. And we're in all open golf carts. So we're just getting soaked <laughs> head to toe. This is before going to any bars or clubs. Oh, yeah. No, we're on our yeah. way there. And, and, you know, I'm myself and Johnny, <laughs> like normal people that go to the tropics, and you guys are not included in these two, are right. wearing like shorts, T-shirts, and flip-flops. And then there's guys in like skinny jeans and snug shirts and, and white sneakers. And it's like, well, you brought this on yourself. Uh, <laughs> so so these, so the guy, look, who, who did that? Just give me a name of someone that wore skinny jeans and like a tight T-shirt. Joshua Clay. He's like Mitch's buddy from high school. He's exactly what you'd think. He wears like cut shirts and like ripped skinny jeans. And like the shirt yeah. color and the sneaker color are 100% of the time the same color. He's that Got guy. It. You know what I'm Got talking it. about? Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah. So he's like, I'm, I'm going to too. I'm gonna go out in Hako, Costa Rica. So I'm going to dress like a metrosexual from Raleigh, right. North Carolina to, to pick up <laughs> chicks, presumably. Is that what he's Bingo. thinking? Yeah. Yep. Okay. hundred percent. Got it. Okay. And, you know, Johnny and I are there in like dirty fishing T-shirts with baggy shorts. And we're like, yeah, we've been to the tropics. We know how this works. You know, not, not yeah, to mention know that's, that's two guys in serious relationships. Right. Who aren't single. Right. So it's like, yeah, right. I'll put my cargo shorts on to go to the club. And you know, <laughs> and you know Boogie, he's all knees out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, and we pull into Hako. Is that Hako. Why you call him Boogie? Yeah. We pull into Hako, go to the club. It's dumping. We're there till like 2.30, 3.30 in the morning. It's like this illegal bar because there's supposed to be a 10 p.m. curfew. So every time the cops walk by, they go, shh, the music turns <laughs> off. And they close the doors are closed, and then five minutes later, the music goes back on, and it's all going off again. Yeah. And yeah. we're there. We're there till like three in the morning. We're like two thirty in the morning. We're like, all right, great. Like everybody's tanked. Time to go home. Get in the golf carts. Load up. Head back out. Make it about two miles down the six mile freeway, and my golf cart goes doo -doo 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 -doo, stops on the highway. It's out of battery. It's been blinking low battery since we left. And I'm like, <laughs> mm, okay, this is good. So we stop. Everybody starts pushing. We're pushing one golf cart while attempting to tow it using two tied together belts and a t-shirt. And <laughs> we, we pull off. Oh, man. <laughs> we pull off at the only sort of, you know, it's not, it's not like the U.S. where there's exits. There's like little homes and stuff. We pull off at the first establishment that we see, which takes us about 30 minutes to get there. Pull off. It's still dumping rain, by the way. It's, it's, we're soaked, covered in mud. Josh Clay's got his white sneakers ruined. Good for him. <laughs> he deserved it. Um, Pull off, bang on this guy's door. It's it's about 3 in the morning now, 3.30 in the morning. This guy comes out sleepy-eyed. He seems more dopey than Retep does currently. Right. And, uh, yeah. and and uh, he's like, hola, you know, like, what do you want, basically? Like, why are you waking me up? And I'm like, hey, can we plug our golf cart in? And he, like, begrudgingly says yes and goes back to bed. And we just spend <laughs> two hours sitting on this guy's front porch until nice. the sun came up. And then the cart we thought was charged enough to make it back and turned out it was. So okay. That was By the way, one. I mean, what a fucking legend that guy is. Like, can you imagine <laughs> Retep? Let's say yeah. you just heard knock, 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 and you heard a no. cacophony of drunk voices outside <laughs> your front door at 2.30 a.m. What, what are you doing? I'm getting my gun and probably <laughs> yeah. like a knife and then yep. just calling the cops. I'm not yep. even going to the door. Yeah. I'll no check question. my ring first to watch the uh, shenanigans go down live. Maybe talk to him through the ring. Get the fuck out of here. He, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he, he didn't have a ring camera on his tin roof. What um, a nice guy, though, man. That was awesome. He was super cool. He was very confused when he opened his door and there were yeah. six soggy, wet gringos standing there with a golf cart plug. Um, <laughs> right. But, imagine. Uh, I mean, imagine the reverse. Six Costa Ricans show up at your door at two thirty in the morning. 
I'd be unbelievably confused and probably right. also let them plug it in. So yes. it all worked <laughs> out. That was night one, and that really set the tempo for the entire week. Um, it was it was a good time. Talk to me a little bit nice. about. Uh, this is a wildlife show. I'm sure you guys did something that involved nature in Costa Rica, but I, I need to know a little bit about what a nightclub in Haco, Costa Rica is like. Is it mostly tourists that are in there? No, in fact, it would be mostly prostitutes um, that oh, are in there. Okay. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's. Uh, how, how do it's you know fun. they're prostitutes? Oh, they make it very apparent. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> no, soliciting it, it, actively. It's, it's a lot of fun, actually. So the two married guys, you know, like I said, the Johnny and I are sitting in the corner in our cargo shorts, drinking gin and tonics, while the uh, Josh Clay's of the world are trying to grind on prostitutes with funhouse mirror boobs. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, it's kind of fun because it's this mix of like tourists and like I, I ended up spending half the night chatting to this Danish couple that were super cool guy and girl they were about 21 years old and they were just cruising around but it's like this weird mix of tourists and then a couple like very wealthy Costa Ricans that are on vacation in this area mm. and then just a just a gaggle of prostitutes like you just see and when I say they make it apparent it's not like oh she's attractive do you think she's a lady of the night she walks up to you with these like double F, you know, funhouse mirror boobs in a completely see-through whatever it happens to be. No nipple pasties or anything. You know, it's just like yeah, everything's yeah. on display. And they're like, hey, you want a party? And I'm like, not even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, there's something yeah. about it. Like in Vegas, you know, I don't go to clubs or anything, but like usually when I go to Vegas, maybe once a year, there would be a group of my friends that like wants to go into a club. And then like, there's a couple of us that'll just stay out gamble. We'll go to the, I like right. the bars that are in the casinos, right? You know, like yep. the, yeah. the center bars or whatever. But yeah, after two, three Airport in the bar. morning, they yeah. just, they just flood in dressed immaculately, you know, really nicely dressed, but you just know, cause they come right, right up and you're like, right. oh, yeah. well, no woman's ever done this. So I'm right. guessing. C correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah. we did, you know, Mitchell, Mitchell's a great guy. The last thing he's ever going to do is cheat on his fiance, and he had no interest in doing that. So me being the good friend I am, I offered 10 different girls $10 to harass him. And when I say nice. harass, I use the word flirt, and they went full harassment. So uh, it, was, <laughs> it was really a treat because he's such like a stiff guy to begin with around women. You know, yes. he's very uncomfortable. And yep. every time a prostitute would come up with me, to me, sitting at the bar with Johnny, I'd give her $10 and point at Mitchell and say, he's the guy. And then just yeah. leave, leave that open to interpretation. So it was really <laughs> funny watching Mitch. He's like on the dance floor. And then like some girl dances, starts dancing with him. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. And he like figures out what's going on. And then she kind of chases him around the bar for five minutes. And then and then he, you know, hides and goes uh. to the restroom and she leaves. It was it was a wonderful source of of entertainment for the night. <laughs> I mean, I'm so sure good. Ashley, Mitch's fiance, the second he said Forrest is coming to the bachelor party, she's like, okay, great. Uh, you're going to be really drunk and yeah. he's going to probably <laughs> pay prostitutes to harass you. Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't have predicted the golf cart episode though. No, no one could have. No one could have. Um, <laughs> no. But yeah, no, it was uh, it was a really good time. It was lots of fun. Happy any, to be any home. Any sort of nature adventures? You go oh, catch yeah. some snakes or anything like that? See some pumas? Uh, we didn't do too much. There was uh, there was some really cool uh, rock iguanas hanging out around the house in the pool, and of course, you know, I had to catch a couple. Um, sure. So <laughs> you know. In my younger years, I would have taken one of those and maybe like put it in the bed of Josh Clay, the hipster guy from L.A. Um, <laughs> but because because I didn't want to harass the iguana, I didn't did nothing of the sort. I just sort of fed him and and played with him a little and showed everybody how neat they were. But yeah. no, nah, that was kind nice. of it. It was uh, it was mostly about the booze. Sure. Now, you've been to the Costa Rica before. Boobs. I've mm -hmm. never been. People people talk about it a lot uh, that it's, you know, a really amazing place to go. Have you been into the jungle, or did you mostly do, like, beach and, and coast stuff? Uh, well, the cool thing about the Pacific side of Costa Rica is it butts, the jungle butts right up against the ocean. So I've, I've had the fortune okay. of doing both, even though I've never been central. I've been into the cloud forest a little bit, but, mm -hmm. you know, like the last time I was there, which was much more interesting than this time when it comes to the stuff that we talk about and do, uh, I would go every night I'd walk up the creek that spilled out into the ocean, and find all kinds of things. I found rhinoclemmies, a Central American box turtle. I found 
bunch of fertilants, which are the venomous pit vipers, eyelash vipers. Uh, we found boas. Um, it's just awesome. Tons of red-eyed tree frogs. Uh, it's just a beautiful place, an incredible jungle. I love Costa Rica. It's an amazing country. I, uh, I was planning a trip there years ago, and we didn't end up, end up going, but we were going to go into the jungle, stay at some place that was... Uh, that was advertising that you go, you do these night walks to look for jaguars. Uh huh. Um, and so I started reading about it, and and you know you see in a lot of ads uh, like black panther, you know what look like black jaguars. Oh, interesting. Um, but apparently they're they're actually extinct, and there's like very very few jaguars left in Costa Rica. Oh, mm. interesting. I didn't know that. I mean, I knew there were jaguars in Costa Rica, but I did not know the abundance of them. What, what is it just super overdeveloped? Is that like, do you think uh, that's why they're mostly extinct? No, not really. I mean, why would they be so low in numbers there? I don't know. I suppose probably just pressure on them. It's not an overdeveloped place. I mean, you, you know, as you drive, you look out and see tons and tons of beautiful jungle. Um, I don't know. Probably just pressure, poaching yeah. and hunting. I'm leaving a space for Rotep to say something here. Yeah, he's not going to. He's sleeping. You guys told me not to talk. <laughs> Good God. So what is wrong with you? Are you sick? No, there's nothing wrong with me. Is it? Do I seem sick? It's You're the v- crack of noon, Patrick. <laughs> the vo- your voice sounds insane. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, as, I, as you age, you get uh, things start happening inside of your body. I don't know what it is, man. I can't help it. Stop, stop. Uh, you know what's the word? Harassing me about my. Uh, what's my, the word? You guys are harassing. Ages. Harassing are, is not a a very articulate word, sir. Yeah, you should Horace. have to search for that one. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, you know, stop being ageists, you son of a bitches. Ageists. I'm the oldest one here. Well, we kind of buried the lead. <laughs> Forest big series premiered last night on Discovery yeah. Plus. Mysterious Creatures with Forrest Galante. Yeah. Yeah, Good it's episode. a mouthful. It's yeah. a mouthful. Um, have you guys seen the poster that Discovery put out? I have not. No. Oh, my God. For anybody listening, I, I have no, I'm not very tech savvy, so I don't know how to pull it up. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you look like fucking uh, Indiana I Jones. I don't know what's going on with this poster. <laughs> I didn't make oh, it. I man. can tell you that much. It's kind of cool. They picked yeah. one where my face looks like it had half a stroke, which is most unfortunate. I swear my face doesn't look that dead on the left side. <laughs> it doesn't look but, that dumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, it's a poster. It's out there. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they're trying to make you look a little... First of all, okay, now I'm looking at it full res. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Did they, did they Photoshop your face to make it a little skinnier? I don't. I, th- I don't think, I they, think did they that. may have. No, I don't it, think so. Make it skinnier. Oh, you mean at the bottom? Oh, listen, of course you wouldn't think so. No, of course no, not. I My think face it looks dead. Skinny. It's not the skinniness. I think it just looks like I had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> You're very tan. They definitely photoshopped in some extra tan. Oh uh, yeah. There's all kinds of filters on this thing. But very Indiana Jones. Very uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's yeah. that's a pretty cool poster. It's cool if it was a rock movie and I was yoked and, you know, six yeah. foot nine. It's not cool when I'm me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I will say, though, yeah, I, watched, cool. I watched the premiere episode. Uh, it's Thanks, really man. good, dude. It's a fucking great show. I hope everyone checks it out. Thank you, dude. It was, uh, it was definitely a lot of work. It was interesting doing it as my own production for the first time, you know, yeah. like really doing everything start to finish. So it was a heck of yeah. a... You didn't have the producer an, there helping you out this time. Most, unfortunately not, man. I'm not going to lie. I would have loved to have had you there a lot of the time. <laughs> um, sure, sure. But uh, no, it was cool, you know. And, and what was fun about last night's episode, other than, you know, there's some crazy stuff that goes on. And we can d- dig into that. But other than that, what are you doing? What are I just, you doing? I just wanna, I, I just wanna compare. Can you hold up the uh, the poster for the mysteri- for your new show again, just please? Just Google it, jerk. You're googling stuff right now. Listen, you've been giving me shit all day. I pull up I one fat like, picture of you. Yeah, I was. That was pre. Oh my god! Did you get plastic surgery? So much, so much of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, For those listening, I pulled up a uh, old picture uh, of Forrest Galante after the jungle potato incident on Naked and Afraid. So correct, correct. Looking good. 
Thank you, I think. That was very backhanded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, go ahead. No, you're good. I, uh, my train of thought was, it was last night's was a special episode because I got to have Remy, who's a guy I've known from my childhood in Zimbabwe, uh, help me out on the crocodile hunt, which was really pretty cool to like show Remy my world as an adult. Because the last time I saw Remy, we were 14 and, you know, catching bugs. And now, right. now, you know, just how, how our worlds have changed. It's kind of interesting. How That's did cool. you get a hold? How did you actually get a hold of him? Like, how did you even find his number? Oh, we've stayed in touch through Facebook. You know, when Facebook okay. came out, I think he found me. I don't really remember. That's, you know, 10 years ago when Facebook launched or whatever. And, uh, and you know, we've loosely stayed in touch. And Remy was sending me and posting photos and images of these people from his village that were losing limbs um, from crocodiles and disappearing and dying. And he, you know, he was like, Forrest, what do we do? What do we do? And I was like, well, I can come help and we can make a show out of it. You know, if Discovery pays for it, I'll come and take care of the croc. And yeah, yeah. he's like, please, please anything. And that's what resulted in the episode, really. Nice. That's cool. Did you... Okay, so talk, just set up the episode a little bit and then I, I have some questions about some specific moments. Sure. Yeah, happy to. Um, so, yeah, so in Kaborabas in Mozambique, which is an area uh, where the Zambezi turns into giant, Zambezi River turns into giant floodplains, uh, there are a ton of crocodiles, and there always have been, and people have always been attacked by crocodiles, people have always hunted crocodiles, and it's just the natural order of life there. But yeah. in the last, like, year, six months, all of a sudden in this one particular village, Remy's Village, Crocodile attacks have just skyrocketed. We, we figured out they were 400% increase in the last couple wow. of years. Holy to shit. To the point that in a single month, I think the month prior to when we got there, 10 people were attacked, and I think eight of them died. Um, oh, my God. So it That's just exploded. And, and we were like, well, Remy was like, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, people are dying. My cousins died. My sisters died. Whatever. I don't, I don't know if that's who it was. But, uh, you know, Remy's like, we don't know what to do. And so... The episode is me going to connect with Remy in Kaborabasa to figure out why are these crocodile attacks on the rise? What is going on and why? Sure. Mm. So, you know, we obviously you and I produced a show together featured in your book, uh, Face the Beast. <laughs> I hope you saw that uh, <laughs> that thing that while yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Fucking man. L the brosters hate me. They think yeah. I am a douchebag. Um, <laughs> but there's a, we, there was a man-eating croc episode there in Myanmar, um, which, you know, you, you sort of knew going in probably why that was happening, right? It's just food scarcity, all the, right. you know, the deer right. and stuff had been, had been hunted out. When yep. you go into Namibia and there's a very recent spike, right? What is your initial suspicion of why one or more crocs are just eating people all of a sudden? You know, so crocodiles are one of the few animals that actively hunt people, and occasionally they sort of figure out, oh, people are an easy target. And I thought that there was a man-eater. Just straight up, like, there is, you know, and this is a, this sounds very sensationalized, but, like, there's a man-eater there. And I was wrong. <coughs> that was not the case going in there. What we did figure out, um, you know, and people, people who haven't seen this can watch the episode, so spoiler alert... What we did figure out is, and it was hard to articulate this because of certain sensitivities, but basically there's a, been a huge influx of people in the area, foreign people from Asian countries, and they need food. And so they're paying the local Mozambicans to fish. And the fish, and they're actually going to a factory that's been established in the area, and the fish populations have plummeted. So oh. all of a sudden these crocodiles have nothing to eat. And, you know, wow. it was sort of a combo wow. of the two, as we answer in the end. There's one crocodile who definitely had developed a taste for people. But the reason that he had been driven to that is the biggest fish that we saw in the nets was about this big. And this is the Zambezi. Mm -hmm. There should be there should be 200 pound catfish coming out of there and giant tiger fish and all these other things. And there aren't like the, the it has been netted so heavily that the fish populations are collapsing and the crocs have nothing left to eat. Damn. Sad. Why, why is there an influx of people moving to Mozambique from Asian countries? Uh, well, specifically, you know, and I'm just going to be honest here, which is something everybody was scared to be on the episode, but specifically it's Chinese countries that are put, or China as a country, that is putting in infrastructure in Mozambique 
And, you know, they're doing what they've done in a lot of countries where they're offering infrastructure in exchange for resources. And Mozambique's right. an incredible country. I mean, it has such an amazing abundance of minerals and mm -hmm. um, uh, just all kinds of things, basically. So there's been a huge Chinese influx for Chinese people to come in and, and they're exchanging the infrastructure. So the, the people that are coming in are doing a good thing. They're building roads and bridges and they're doing things like that, but they're also mining and they're logging, which is where we were in this case. There was a lot of logging going on and things like that. And they need to be fed. You know, typically right. these have been small African villages in native areas and they, f they fish or hunt in a relatively sustainable way because they're small populations. But all of a sudden, you know, 10,000 people come in for a logging operation. Well, they right. need to be fed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. China, and this is not to, build, uh, you know, we're, we're not taking any political stance. These are just I'm, facts. I'm being, so, and this is, yeah, a, exactly. I, I fought with the network about this. It's not about, it doesn't, I don't care if it was Americans doing it. I don't care if it was another African nation right. doing it. The fact yeah. is the fact, which is that China as a country are, is putting in infrastructure in exchange for resources. It's right. not about the race of people. It's about the location that they've come from. So China, 98%, sure. think about this, 98% of all rare earth elements, which are, we use REEs for a lot of uh, like computer-based stuff, right? Chips, yeah. uh, yep. you know, cellular technology uses these rare earth elements, which are basically these, you know, very dense minerals that that are way deep down in the earth. So you have to dig really far down and it's very destructive to the environment to extract rare earth elements. 98% of rare earth elements are controlled by China and are mined by China. And yep. a big part of what they do, it's not just that they ha happen to have a ton in China. Part of the reason for it is they do these deals with African countries where they say, Correct. hey, you, you give us mining rights to the, you know, these areas and we'll build you um, coal plants. Right. Yep. So they build them these coal, coal powered electrical plants and they'll they'll spend 20 or 30 million dollars building a coal plant. And, it, it, you know, research has shown that a, like, it's like some crazy amount, like 85 percent of the coal plants that have been built are already just done. Like defunct. They, yeah, yeah, they're defunct because they can't continue to run them. But right. they make these trade deals where they build the plant and then they mine rare earth elements. And there's a huge RE project in, in Mozambique. I, I drove by the factory. It's it's amazing because Mozambique is so interesting. You get to Maputo, which is like an old city, an old Portuguese colony type city, you know, and, and it hasn't been Portuguese in a long time. But it's this beautiful old city with this sort of, uh, you know, European influence from the Portuguese days. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing that you see outside of the city is like, you know, it's like it's like the equivalent of a four bedroom house that would be a store. And right, you're driving right. down the road, and that's the biggest thing that you see, you know, like a little tuck shop kind of place. It's like, yeah, like a four-bedroom house. And that's still like a substantial-sized building. And then you drive for another two hours on immaculate paved roads because the, the Chinese have put the China, – China has put them in. Right. And these roads, I mean, I'm talking a thousand times nicer than the 101 or the 405. I mean, immaculate. <laughs> and you're in well, the middle of the road, bush. But yeah. True, but you're in the middle of the bush <laughs> of Mozambique, and then you come up on this thing – and it's so hard to explain because it's not like the size of a Walmart supercenter. It's like the size of, it, it's like if you took Six Flags, Magic Mountain, Disneyland, SeaWorld, and put them all together and then added wow. 30 Walmart supercenters, they're all there together. And this is one facility, one mine that's either, and, and they're not, by the way, Patrick, you mentioned they were doing uh, REE mining. They're also doing logging. They're also doing all these other things they're looking for gems you know they're doing yeah. all these other things out of one facility but you're driving and you get to a place that is bigger than the capital city that is just wow. infrastructure on the side of a highway in the middle of nowhere and it's it's this it's this thing that china has put in in order to build infrastructure and resources around right. and i have, by the way i have no problem with that i hate the mining i hate the the, the minerals you know yeah. exploitation and all of that but when you see the bridges that they're putting in and these immaculate roads that they're putting in, it's, you'd be crazy if you were a president or a government official to not accept that for your people. But at sure. the same time, it's absolutely destroying the country. Oh, God, it's a fucked up conundrum, dude, because it's so hard. It would be so hard to, to turn it down, like you just said. I mean, be. you know, yeah. But, but anyway, look, that's, yeah. that's, that's sort of neither here nor there. I just was telling, telling that because... 
When in the episode we dig into how there's overfishing taking place and that's led to this one crocodile chasing people around. Right. But the reason that I I really quite frankly wasn't able to talk about publicly was because of this giant influx of people and foreign people at that and they need to be fed. So you've yeah. got this place which is a nursery for fish by the way. A, a delta like this is where an entire fish population comes from that is running out of fish and all of the animals above it in the food chain need food and people right. are next on the menu. So it's a, it's, it's a conundrum. Oh my God. What a mess. <laughs> well, Fuck. there's a couple moments in the episode, <clears throat> speaking of people being on the Crocs menu. Um, Let's talk about the canoe flip a little bit. That was, uh, that was, uh, if that was me, <laughs> I think I might've been too scared to climb back into the canoe. Yeah, well, we, we made it to, luckily we were so close to that riverbank and we were yeah, able yeah. to scramble up it, but we did not actually get back. It's funny, we never showed that, but we did not get back in that canoe. We towed it back to uh, the village. We were like, fuck that, not getting back in that canoe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you're on a river uh, where you know there's crocs eating people at night looking for crocs. And your right. canoe flips over. Just, just tell, just run me through this and what you're thinking. Yeah, I mean, we're like five, six days into the search and haven't seen any big crocs yet, and it's not really adding up. So we're like, look, all the most of the attacks are taking place when people are fishing at night. Let's get in a canoe and go stealthily. And, you know, I, to this day, I don't know what happened. I don't know if a hippo bumped us. I don't know if a croc nailed the underside of the canoe. I don't know if Remy and I just got super out of whack, but it certainly didn't feel like that because I've never just flipped over in a canoe before. Right. Um, <laughs> and we're paddling, and thank God the, the powerboat with the camera guys is following us, and they were only, I don't know, 150 feet away or so, and all of a sudden our canoe just went boom, you know, <laughs> over. And I'm like, Remy's like stunned. He stands up in this like waist deep water, and he's like, Forrest, are you okay? And I'm like, Remy, get out of the water. Get the fuck out of the water. And I'm like <laughs> screaming at him, and he's like, Okay, and then like starts trucking it out of the out of the water. But like, there's this oh moment. Oh my god! It just happened so quickly. Like, it didn't even really cross my mind. Like, oh, we're being attacked, or there's anything going wrong. It was just like, I'm in the canoe. Oh, now I'm in the water. Oh right. shit! Got to get out of the water. And um, yeah, you know, thankfully nothing bad happened. But it was uh, it was definitely dicey. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, man! Amygdala kicked in there. The minute amygdala you have. Yeah, agreed. Oh, dude, let's talk about the witch doctor. That was fucking crazy. Sure. Yeah, that was cool. So, yeah, that was even before. So, for anybody that hasn't watched the episode, a lot of spoiler alerts coming up. So, we go to Remy's village, and we talk to a bunch of people, and they tell us how there's not a lot of fish left, and they're eating in Bevo, which are these giant ground rats. And, um, you know, we just we discuss all this stuff. And the people in the village, and keep in mind, this is tribal Africa, they say the evil crocodile is being controlled by a witch doctor, a female... Nganga. And mm. I'm like, all right, I mean, let's go talk to this witch dog. He's like, no. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm not going over there. He's like, nobody goes there. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll go. And he's like, all right, go by yourself. So I take off. And uh, she lives like completely by herself in the middle of the forest outside of the village. And we're walking up. And the weirdest thing was, as we're getting close, you just start to hear marimba music you know it was like doo -doo 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 -doo, and i was like oh boy what what what's going on over here and, <laughs> yeah. and to be honest like hearing marimba music in, a, in an african village is not exactly like you know that's the same as hearing a radio in a frat house like it's not like that wild yeah. um it's just like you know why is there music wafting through the forest in the middle of nowhere we see some <laughs> bats and all this stuff happens and i rock up and there's a shirtless guy yoked you know super jack skinny african guy playing the marimba, and I'm like, ah, oh, he doesn't look like a witch doctor. And this old, toothless woman comes running out of her hut, grabs me by the hand. By the way, the cameras are just following. We haven't even, like, got there yet. Yeah. Ca grabs me by the hand and says in, uh, I forget what language she was speaking. Um, it's a very small language in, in that region, very, very insular. Uh, and she says, and I, we had a translator, and she says, I've been waiting for you. Come and sit down. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, Okay. And uh, we she's, walk into her hut, and she's got a fire, and she sits down like she's been waiting there for two hours for me to show up. And I'm like, okay, cool. And uh, She's lonely. Nobody goes over there to visit her. Right. Yeah, but how she knew we were coming or the fact that there were, you know, six Murungus, six Westerners. Right, like a welcoming in, ceremony to thing. Nothing. Well, it wasn't really a ceremony so much as, well, you, you know. know the best way to put it was that she knew we were coming without, right. you know, maybe somebody ran from the village to tell her or something. I don't know. But it was pretty weird. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> and then, yeah, we sat down, and, and, you know, she was a little nutso, but also really interesting. And um, she just told us, no, the crocodiles are not bad. You know, like, she's like, there's a, a bad crocodile, but the crocodiles are not bad. We've lived with them for a very long time. And then she sent us on the whole wild goose chase to catch the feather and all that stuff, which was yeah. cool. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, she was just, she was a hell of a character, that's for sure. It's, cr- it's crazy to think, though, like, <laughs> so you think about this village you know, these small villages have no interest in electricity, right? They're not like, no. hey, we can't get to, wait to get wired up because they're never nope. going to get wired up, right? Nope. So think, you think about the trades that these governments make. Basically, what this village gets out of it is n- no benefit, and their main source of food, the fish, is now getting taken to feed the people that are working at the, at the, fac- the Chinese factory mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the plant. So they, now they don't have fish, and they're eating rats, Yep, and this coal plant that's being built doesn't benefit them at all. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's a pretty negative feedback loop that doesn't end, and it's uh, you know, it's terrible for the people, and they know it. But at the same time, if they fish and take fish to the factory, they get paid. You know, so okay. it's tra- well, it's there's, there's a economic term called tragedy of the commons, which means you know, tragedy of the commons is if I don't take it, you will. So I might as well, right? So in other sure. words, if there's if there's one avocado left in the whole world you know if i don't take it patrick will so although this is the last avocado i better take it and that's right. you know that's tragedy of the commons and that's what's going on uh in these places where these giant influxes of people come in and it's well, it's a mess so who who does the uh, all the infrastructure and everything benefit only only the factory workers and then like the rich leaders who are obviously well, i'm sure taking Afri- Africa's a mess, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pockets being lined for sure, but it does benefit some people in some ways. Like I said, the roads were immaculate. You know, we went over a bridge. So Maputo is a city that's built on two sides of a river, um, sort of an inlet. It used Mm. to take about three hours to get from one side. You had to go way up, cross over a small bridge where it narrowed, and come back around. And Mm. now the, the Chinese have put in this bridge. I mean, it's like more beautiful than the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It takes three minutes to get from one side of Maputo to the other, whereas it used to take, like I said, about three hours. So, you okay. know, there, there are things like that that benefit the populace as a whole, but not really benefiting any individuals outside of those whose pockets are getting lined to take the trade deals. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it's just a fucked up situation, especially just because they're kind of depleting the resources. I mean, what are you going to do and you know, if it's you funny. can't eat? Like, we've who's so, going to use the fucking bridges? We've so like, derailed from the, the show, and that's totally fine, because I didn't get a chance to do this in the show. The sad thing is, nobody wants to talk about it, right? We, we live in a world where everybody's so scared of pointing fingers, regardless of what it is. And, and I'm talking about a country. I'm not talking about a race or anything else. I'm talking about two countries. I'm talking about Mozambique and the country of China. And people are so scared to point fingers. When I came back with a very honest story, and I was like, here's what's going on. Here's why the fish are being depleted. Everybody uh, above me was scared to tell that story because they're like, oh, you know, we don't want to be contributing to the Asian American hate or whatever. And I'm like, it's not Asian Americans. There's no hate. This is a real story of something that's going on in Africa, you know? And they're like, oh, well, there's all this bad blood at the moment. And I understand being sensitive, and I am culturally sensitive. I mean, I'm going to a wedding on Saturday with literally my, my, one of my best friends. His name's Jason Sue. He's from China. And we're, I'm going to his I love the guy. You know, it has nothing to do yeah. with race or the individual. But these are the realities of things that are taking right. place around the planet. And, and, and big broadcasters are scared to share reality. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a huge problem. Well, uh, obviously, the, the show, yeah. the title of the show is Mysterious Creatures. <clears throat> I'm sure that it morphed quite a bit from what you originally pitched. And <laughs> there's, you know, you, you had to kind of play up the mystery at the beginning more than, you know, for TV. Yeah, Because you had to get it on TV. And to mm-hmm. get any conservation, you know, message on television, I think a lot of the people who listen to this show are very interested in the conservation part of it. Right. To get any conservation message on television, you really have to sneak it in. It's like sneak the whole h- hide the in. broccoli is what they call it in television. Um, Se- which is and, interesting. And, you know. and sneak it in is the right word. Unless people, I, like, I can't use buzzwords like conservation easily on the show. No, and you when can't I even do say my, global like, warming on television. No, 
No, yeah. and people don't know this. People think that what they're watching is genuine, but but broadcasters are so scared of alienating an audience, right? Whether that's an audience that doesn't believe in global warming or an audience that thinks conservation's a joke or whatever it might be. They're so scared of alienating an audience that they want everything to be so down the line that when someone like myself comes along who's passionate about conservation and doesn't really care about you know conventions or norms or cultural or society or anything like that, they're like, whoa, this guy's dangerous. You know, got to make sure he stays in the box. Like, if he wants to talk about conservation, it's got to have all these other things attached to it. It sucks. I mean, it sucks. It's not. It's not as honest yeah. as I would like to be. When we it's were crazy doing that, oh, sorry, we, go ahead, Ritz. Oh, it's crazy that we, uh, you know, reality TV, as it's coined, is like the biggest thing on TV, and it's, it's, it's so far from reality. It's all just like. Uh, hiding agendas, pushing agendas. Like there's no, there's no, like, it's not, it's, it's all produced. It just seems like because, no, because of legal issues, because people are scared. Like you're saying, I'm not saying yeah, like sure. it's fashioned into these stories. I'm right. saying that you can't do things because the audience is, you'll alienate well, audiences. You just, you, just like you said, you have to hide the truth. Like when we, I made a show called ice cold gold. That was, we did three seasons on animal planet. And it was a show where these guys were prospecting in Greenland. The beginning of every episode started by setting up the concept, which is the ice sheet that covers Greenland is receding and melting. And it's basically exposing about four miles of new land on the coast every year. There's four more miles of land because of global warming. That's the whole construct of the show. Right. But we had to explain it without mentioning global warming. Yeah, that's so we right, never yeah. addressed why the ice is melting. Right. We just had to say the ice is melting really quickly. And then this move is on. Like, this, the ice is melting yeah. and people are wearing less jackets these days. But anyway, <laughs> right. uh, well, I mean, and that mixed with like a complete lack of critical thinking in today's society is as a dangerous mix. It's just propagating everything because now you have dumbasses, and I'm not saying I'm above any of this. I react emotionally to dumb shit I see all the time. Everybody does it. It's like, it's human nature. But you have, you know, you're watching this, and it's like there's this severely important piece of information missing. And if you're just inundated with shit coming at you, you're reading Reddit, you're reading Instagram, you're looking at news stories, you're doing all this shit, you're not going to critically think like, no. oh, like this is a reality of, of, of global warming that I hear all these buzzwords about in, in news articles and shit, you know? What, what do you, you don't guys, see that. You don't make that connection. What do you guys think is just top of, top of your head? What do you think is the fakest reality show that you've seen? I oh, mean, for God. me, it's easy. I'll go first while you guys think. Desperate, like the... the uh, the, the Real Housewives series. Yeah. Think about this. There's, there's like five. There's like probably fucking ten of them by now. They're wildly yeah. successful. Yeah. They're among the highest yeah, rated shows on, on television. <laughs> but think about the fact that it's a group of people that hate each other's guts, yet every <laughs> night they get together for big, a big dinner. Is that what it is? Is that what it, I, I've never actually it, watched it. Is every, that what it is? And yeah. every dinner devolves into a huge fight. Someone's throwing wine on someone. But yet they <laughs> constantly hilarious. are having house parties where they just get together so that they can right. scream at each other. Right. And they're like, well, let's, this was great. Let's do it again tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah there, exactly. is, there, there is a certain, uh, I mean, and they're older too, though. So that's, that's, that, that doesn't land for me because you, when you're younger, you do do that because it's like you, right. you fucking party hard. You don't give a shit. People get hammered. You fight and then you sober up. You're good for a few hours. You do it all over again. You don't care. When you're older, like that's either an act or you ha- you're an alcoholic. <laughs> I mean, you have a, right. a real problem. Right. For me, it's uh, it's this show called Marrying Millions. It's fucking I ridiculous. It. It's it's a show about um, you know it's uh, usually a, a, a younger woman is gonna marry some way older guy who's a fucking millionaire, and a lot of them are just like, and it's not always that too. Like there's there's young couples. And uh, all this, man. But it is so fucking fake. Like one time this guy goes into a diamond store with the girl uh, to, to get like the diamond looked at or something. And, and it's this huge fucking like, like novelty sized diamond. Okay. And the uh, the jeweler or whatever, you know, obviously in my the, mind a paid actor. actor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like it, it's it's edited in such a way where like she's looking at it and uh, she's just like that. 
Yeah, it's 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 not real. In front of like the girl and the guy, and the guy just wigs out. He's like, turn the cameras off, and you never hear from them again, as if they've left the show and like it's over. Like, and there's like all this controversy about it. I'm like, this is this is the fakest thing I've ever seen, and so easy to do. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Forrest, what do you think? I think the biggest scam, and Patrick, you're not gonna like to hear this, but I think the biggest scam. And one of the fakest things in reality television is The Bachelor. I think that whole oh, thing yeah. is scripted. I think they know exactly what they're getting into. And somehow the fact that they, like, keep all the contestants on board and being like, yeah, no, like, for sure, it's, this, is, this is legit. And, like, you're going to find your true love and all of that. I, I think it's genius. I don't know how they've done it. But granted, yeah. I haven't watched that much Bachelor, but it just seems... Like, I'm sitting there watching it, and you just, again, it's like two guys start fighting, and you're like, what are you actually fighting about? And like, oh, well, he's staying, even though everybody hates him, or she's getting the rose. Right. And you're like, fuck, that's, that." obviously the producers are like, well, we need her because she's a great source of controversy. Let's keep her in. So oh, they yeah, go and yeah. tell the Bachelor, like, gotta pick Jenny, or whatever her fucking name is. And then Jenny yeah. makes it until the final three, and you're like, he fucking hates Jenny. Everybody hates <laughs> yeah. Jenny. You're like, this is such bullshit. Like, why yeah. is Jenny still here? And tonight, Jenny, will you accept this rose? It's like, no. Like, Jen, Jenny just got picked up from a fucking trailer park. She's a nightmare person. Like, <laughs> she's crazy. Yeah. Crazy as fuck. You know what? Yeah. I still watch it because it is it is two hours of good fun on a Tuesday night. I know you <laughs> two love hours, it. brutal, you love it. <laughs> dude. They they do a spinoff called Bachelor in Paradise, and I've never made it through a full season, but we watched <laughs> we watched this season. Oh my god, it was good. It was so fucking good. Every episode was just <laughs> banging. Yeah. Well, what made it good? Like just because they were so fucking like everything was such drama. They were all just so fucking in their own heads. They're trapped at this resort where they've got about one acre of, of beachfront <laughs> land to, to mill about for six weeks. And there's just a lot of like people just completely fucking over the other person. You know, they, some new guy or girl comes to the beach and they're just immediately banging them in the fantasy suite. It was, it was good stuff. And no stuff. phones. Like no phones. They can't do anything. And I think that adds a lot to these shows because you don't really realize Is when that you're a thing watching on The Bachelor, no phones? Yeah, they can't or, have their phones. Yeah. Oh, and the, and the producers this year, Forrest, you'll like this, and then we'll move on to something else. But they, no, it's kind of fun. The, the producers <laughs> did, this, did this one couple real dirty where the guy was there first, <laughs> and he already was full-on dating another Bachelor Nation chick. But okay. he had to pretend to be into this girl so he could stay until she got there. Okay. And they didn't. They turned off their mics once she got there, and they're laying on one of these daybeds, and they turned their mics off. But, of course, there's a plant mic in the daybed. Of course. And they had a full con conversation. They were like, she's like, dude, I, just from the episode where you mentioned me, I got 10,000 more followers. And they have a full convo about how brilliant they are for going on the show just to get more Instagram followers. And wow. they played the entire thing with no edits and just no killed way. these people. Yeah, it was great. No way. Dude, send yeah. that to me. That, I yeah, want to watch that. that. That's yeah. good. That's good. So they're, they're literally sitting there snickering about how cool and clever they are because they've turned off the mics and because they're skyrocketing yeah. to, like, social media fame. Yes, And that's exactly. the whole reason they're doing it. Uh, exactly. And, and I think the, the girl actually deleted her Instagram afterwards because wow. they were, like, I mean, millions and millions of Americans were like their villain number one. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, brutal. that's the whole thing about The Bachelor is you're in it for the wrong reasons, right? They yeah, made exactly. that like a whole a whole <laughs> right. through line where it's like, oh, you're not here for love. You're in it for the wrong reasons. It's like, yeah, no shit. I'm lying on a fucking daybed telling you I'm here for Instagram <laughs> followers. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, love it. Yeah, it's shit good shit. Fucked. What else you got? What do you got? Should we do one news story? And then sure. the battle royale. I got news stories. At least I got I got news stories. Yeah, we gotta do a battle royale. Um, let's see. Oh, did you guys see these shrimp that are showing up in Arizona after the monsoons? I did not. Well, these are pretty cool. So you know, I like to think that I have a pretty good handle on m most of the wildlife that runs around the world, especially in the United States, especially in the modern world, and mm -hmm. be like, yeah, I know what I know. You know, I know about animals. I know where things are. Well, when you think of Arizona, you do not think of shrimp. And sure enough, monsoon season <laughs> nope. hit, 
The headline <laughs> reads, Strange three-eyed dinosaur shrimp are showing up in Arizona admits... admits um, yeah. Let me try that word again. Amidst monsoons. And, uh, you know, I clicked the link. I was like, this is going to be, you know, some BuzzFeed nonsense. Nope, there are these horseshoe crab-looking shrimp that are coming out of the dry, dusty earth that is the Arizona desert when the monsoons are hitting, which is, it's unreal. Like, these look like deep-sea trilopods, um, and they're, yeah, they're crawling out of the desert. So so they basically are, they're living under the 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 soil? Yeah. They're living under and and you're not talking about soil. Soil is like something plants grow in. This is just like desert evilness that they're living <laughs> right. in. Yeah. Dude, if you saw this Holy in Arizona, shit. isn't that cool? It's wild, dude. There must be just enough groundwater like deep down under there to keep them alive. Right? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's obviously some kind of underground borrowing going on and they're spending time, you know, under subterranean. I don't think we know anything about them, to be honest. Um, I haven't read the full article. I was just blown away by the uh, by the the images themselves. But I just that there's imagine, a water faring uh, creature in the middle of the desert. <laughs> well, just look at it. Tell me that's not a deep sea creature. When you look at that, you look at that no and go, shit. yep, that lives Dude. on an under undersea volcano. And sure enough, they're popping out of the earth in Arizona, which literally just goes to sort of show us we think we know it all and we know nothing. Yeah, so what what do we I mean, did they did I mean, did the a did they drop out of the sky or they how the fuck could these have gotten there? Well, no, the, no. Like, so the monsoon season brings these crazy crazy rains, right? right. Yep. So obviously tons and tons of water. They had a really gnarly monsoon season this year. Conditions have changed and so they came up from Middle Earth where they live and yep. came to the surface. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so okay. they, lay, they lay their eggs in the sand or in the gotcha. desert soil. And then when they have these massive torrential downpours, the porous earth sort of just the water just sucks through it, right? And, yeah. uh, and then, yeah, their eggs hatch and these things crawl out. But it's just, I don't know, it's just wild. Bro, how fucked up is it to think that, you know, there's just these, there's just potentially just monsters living in the <laughs> yeah. ground somewhere. And if, and if it rains, yep. like water is going to activate them. If it rains a little <laughs> so, too much. Somewhere, somewhere in like the Saharan desert where it never gets rain or the Gobi desert is, yeah. is, an egg, is an egg from tremors. And as soon as that, yeah. Somebody, yeah, somebody's exactly. going to, some tourist is going to be taking a walk out of their land cruiser and take a leak in a certain pile of sand. That's it. Whole world's over. Tremors is back. Sand yep, shrimp, it's fucking worms. Yeah, it's coming. I hope. Mysterious hey, so Creatures episode. <laughs> we, got yeah. a, we got a Brosner DM from Sam Gochner 7 okay. who said, Hey, I've just started watching some of the Extinct or Alive episodes. I have a question for Forrest. I notice when looking for the animals, you guys often put up a drone to get a bird's eye view. He's like, I have the same drone that you guys use, and I know it's very loud. I can't help but wonder if the sound of the drone would sc scare away animals in the surrounding area. How does that work? I have some opinions, uh, but I'll let you go first since he addressed you. Yeah, my opinion is any glimpse is better than no glimpse. So even if it's a glimpse of something fleeting away from a drone noise, uh, totally worth it. The other thing I'll say to, was it Sam? Um, yeah. Is that, so animals are not like people. They don't look at a drone and go, oh, that's scary, right? Animals, you know, if you're an elephant and a noisy eagle flies overhead, you're not very scared of that eagle, right? Nothing in your life has ever been like, oh, birds scare me. So if there's a noisy one all of a sudden, it's not going to freak you out. And so we use drones tactically, I would say, when the animal is not something that necessarily would be scared by it. So, you know, if we were if we were looking for an extinct frog that's entire life is spent hiding from birds, I wouldn't use a drone. But when we're looking for a <laughs> right. large mammal that is completely unaffected by birds overhead, it, it's the perfect tool. Yeah, one thing when I, when BTG and I were doing the bear documentary in Alaska, you know, we often would try and use the drone um, just to get a better shot of bears yeah. that we had taken notice, you know, that we saw, mm -hmm. but they were really far away. Sure. And uh, they would just stare at it, you yeah. know, like they look a big brown it. bear. They would just sit there and stare at it. They were enamored with it. And then if we came down a little too close, then they would sort of disappear into the tree line. They wanted nothing to do with it once it got close. But okay. it's a great way of getting footage of the animal, which on Extinct or Alive, the pretty much the entire goal is to get footage, if not a DNA sample. 
which is obviously a lot harder than just getting a shot of something. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Unless, That's especially true, if it's the extinct Cape lion where you'd Use. have to smuggle it out in your arse. <laughs> That's right. The DNA sample, that is, not the drone. The whole but lion. In, and no, not the whole, the whole lion. lion. Yeah. yeah, it's it's um, interesting though because like I'm always I'll watch. Uh, I'm I'm gonna equate this to to cooking shows. You you watch how they like do a recipe or whatever, and they leave you just there's certain things that again it's omitted. You don't know like there's a few spices or a few things that aren't in there in this recipe. And it's like for this for this drone thing, it's like you can only if you don't know that you can only do it for certain animals. And you don't know that piece of information. You go out there and you try and capture, you know, like a skittish bird with a drone and it just flies off every time. And you don't know that you guys are really out there like actually doing this research or knowing from experience that, you know, you can film certain animals this way. But yep. for me, what I would do is I would just put a bird whistle on the exhaust pipe of the drone. So that, oh, there you go. So Make it louder. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah, smart. Sounds like a bird. The yeah. You should have your own Genius. show, Peter. Dr drones Thank have you. a lot of exhaust pipes. Can you help like me with cars. that? Um, <laughs> all right. I think I know what time it is. Do you know what time oh, it is? Oh, boy. Well, can you guys uh, delay as, a little more as, so as I can Peter fran me? frantically looks for the drop? <laughs> for the jingle. What time is it? Oh my god! Well, I know. It's, it's about quarter to two. What time is it for you? I think I know what time it is. I think I know, you know what time, time it is. is. Time. For what? The battle. <laughs> first for first pick, a lime. I. No, it's, it's a. Small avocado. Wait, is that avocado? A, is that a prop <laughs> avocado? Is that fake? Uh, no, no, they're real <laughs> ones. They're from my garden. I was walking around the garden before this. They're freakishly they look very green. unripe. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they're very unripe. They've just fallen off the tree. They need they need time. Put, put them in a month. Put them in a brown paper edible. bag. You know this? Yep. Oh, okay. I sure do. <laughs> For those of you who don't, if you put an unripe avocado in a brown paper bag, it ripens faster. <laughs> That's called takeaway facts. All right, I've got a good one. Can I uh, throw one out here for us? Please, yeah, I'd love that. All right, this is submitted by one of our brosners, Adam the Plant. Okay, we're going love back that. to Peter's favorite. It's a fight till death. Thank God. Oh, very nice. It's but a here's, minute. there's a few little little things here. It's not just a normal fight till death. Let me get the they're, notepad out. They are fighting till death in the middle of a body of water. Doesn't specify Ooh. whether it's salt or fresh. Okay. okay, so it's an aquatic okay. battle royale, but here's the kicker. You can't use any fish or aquatic mammals. Ooh, that's okay. fun. I like so, that. Okay. Now here's what we're going to do. Are gonna there, take is there anything else? <laughs> head, body, and a special ability. Head, body, are, special ability. They're okay. going to fight till death, um, and no fish, no aquatic mammals. I think and this is a say, good one. You say aquatic mammals meaning like marine mammals, right? Yeah, no yeah, whales, yeah. No orcas. Okay. Exactly. <sighs> yep. Okay. Boy. This is, Whew, boy. this is a tough one. Who's going okay. first? Not head, sorry, me. It's, it's head, body, and... Special uh, ability. Special ability. Okay, I'll go yep. first. Okay. I don't I even know going, how to Google search this. I am going <laughs> to... Can. So, all right, I got this. Uh, I'm going to start with the head. And I am going to give my animal the head of a polar bear. So polar bears are very good swimmers. They are certainly not aquatic or marine mammals, but they are yep. excellent at swimming. They have crazy bite force. They're super gnarly and scary. And that, on the other two animals that I'm hoping you guys don't pick, is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Good, good start. Good start. I'll go next as Peter tries to figure out how to use his Alta Vista search engine to uh, <laughs> uh, ask gonna, Jeeves, mate. <laughs> I'm going to start with my special ability, and I'm going to take the special ability of a very interesting frog found in Brazil. It's known as Bruno's cask-headed frog. Now, this is a v extremely venomous frog, but it, it literally shoots the venom out of its head at, at a great distance, right? Can do it in the water, can do it out of the water. It's, I, my animal is going to be able to shoot toxic venom directly at you out of its head. Doesn't even need to get that close to you. That's gonna, it's going to be a real problem for your it's polar bear cool. head. pretty cool. I didn't yeah. know about the Bruno's <laughs> frog venom. It was That's only cool. discovered in uh, 2015. That's really neat. Okay. And by the way, is, it's uh, venom. It's venom is twenty five times deadlier than that of a pit viper. Jesus. So that gets in my polar bear mouth, and I'm in big trouble. You're, you're in trouble. Yeah. 
Who? Yeah. What'd you get? What'd what you get? What do you got? All right, so it's got to be in water, okay? That's uh, a big part of it, yes. Correct, yeah. yes. That's the, ma okay. the main part of it, actually. So yeah. my, my uh, <laughs> god damn it, this is so hard. Uh, my, it's going like to have it. the, uh, so we need body, the body of a, uh, of a, uh, a lobster. A lobster's not a fish, and it has claws that are meaty and delicious. Okay. Uh, and also, um, what? He said no, like, aqua fine. Good. I like it. It's yeah, aquatic great. Aquatic mammals. In order to not delay this 23 minutes while you... He said out. fish or yeah. aquatic mammals. No, no you, yep. you found the loophole, and we'll give yep. it to you. Yep. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? How is that that is not a fish nor yep. an aquatic mammal? Very good, sir. Please okay, continue. so you've got a one foot long body. Yep. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this big. Yeah. It's this and big. And the um, it's delicious. It will have the um, special ability of. Uh, this is awful. A jellyfish, which is not... I, it's too, It's tough because I'm the layman, and I can't Google it. That's the problem. There's no way to Google this correctly. <laughs> if you do know ways to Google things like this, jelly, please comment. You just but said jellyfish. It's not a fish. I know. It's not a fish. <laughs> he's going with a loophole. Yeah, he's really hammering that. Okay, so it's going to have the stinging abilities of just your common jellyfish? No, it has the immortal abilities of that one immortal jellyfish that can live forever, which I know I've used before, but this is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I like that whispery voice. This is All really right. hard. All right. I'm going to give uh, – look, swimming is a big part of this because, look, I'm not a – I'm pretty sure on land I could easily handle Forrest in a fight. <laughs> But in the water, he would drown me in two seconds because he's a much better swimmer. I want a, a rugged, <laughs> tough body that adds some, some weaponry, but also a good swimmer. I'm going to go, and people are going to be mad because I pick it a lot, but I'm trying to win. I'm going with the body of a Nile crocodile. Good. Very good, good swimmer. Very it's got good. some Very claws, good. can whip you with the tail. Yep. It's got tough, thick skin. This is yep. going to be a problem. Terrifying okay. animal so far. Very terrifying. More so than a lobster jellyfish hybrid. Um, <laughs> it's true. So, I, I have no chance at winning this. No, this one's this is I've not your get down. already. Um, so I have the intimidating head of a polar bear, which I'm hoping, which can for sure, I think, bite through the height of a Nile crocodile. Don't know how I'm going to handle the Bruno's frog venom just yet. Uh, Peter, Peter's creature I'll just step on. Yep. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Probably give you some energy. So, yeah, so to go with my polar bear head, I am going to give myself the body of a beaver. Very mm. agile swimmer. He's got that big tail for slapping and distracting. By the way, beavers are just kind of terrifying. People think they're very cute and adorable, and they are, but they are, they're, they're big animals, and they're pretty gnarly. So, yeah, great swimmer, very agile, very nimble, should easily be able to dip, dodge, and dive around that croc body yep. of a beaver. Um, dip, dive, and dodge. Special ability. Oh, by the way, just quick side note. Uh, one yeah. of the Brosners sent me an article from his hometown. Uh, this just happened at the end of September. A guy in Massachusetts was attacked by a 40-pound beaver viciously. <laughs> They're uh, gnarly, dude. Yeah, tore the shit out of his hand, arm, and legs. It fucked him up. Almost drowned him, he said. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, Vicious beavers. No, they're crazy. Don't don't be fooled. And then to add to my polar bear headed beaver, I'm going to give it the special ability of a platypus. Some venomous Ooh. hind leg claws. So all I have to do is duck around with the claws, put some venom in there. It's pretty pretty gnarly animal. Yeah, okay, so you've got a so you've got a beaver body, it's got venomous hind legs and a and a and a polar bear head. Okay, to add to my Nile Croc body and its special power of shooting poison 25 times more deadly than a venom, That's I should say, impressive. than a pit viper, I, I obviously I want a scary head. I want a, a head with a lot of bite force. Yep. I also want my animal to be cool looking. Okay. I'm going to go with uh, a hyena head. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Are, they, are they pretty good swimmers? Yeah. What's up with that? Do those go well, in water? No, my, I, I've got the swimming ability. Ish? No. No, I've got the, my so croc is handling the swimming. This the whole time, what's keeping its hyena face above water, the whole time. 
I see what you're saying. You're saying it's not going to be able to hold its breath. I don't long. know. I actually have no idea. Uh, if he doesn't know because it's you. If it was me, he would know for sure. No, I don't know the answer. <laughs> I'm sure that it's not a good pick, I was but going I don't with, know whether hyenas can swim I was well thinking that you, when first, when you go swim, how much are you swimming with your fucking head? You swim with your body, <laughs> mate. I've got the body of the okay. croc. The lungs are in the That's body. True. That's true. That is true. That's a good point. Lungs are in the body. I All right, ra- round yours out. Round yours out. S- Herpes. So, no. So this is um, <laughs> this is going to be interesting because my head is in fact going to be larger than the entire body and special ability of my creature. It's <laughs> going to be mostly head with a the head of a hippopotamus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is very confusing, creature. This is a fucking it's just a, mess. It's just a head with like a little hippopotamus lops- head. It's just like this huge claws. head with like a little lobster tail on the back of it. Just. <laughs> I kind of want one of these for my aquarium. <laughs> this is a train wreck. I hope someone draws By the way, your. This animal. would be. I was just gonna say this would be a great one to have drawn up if any Brosners have some or free like time. These are three D animated video would be. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So I obviously uh, have won. Thanks. All right. Run it, run it down for us so people yeah. can vote. Yep. So jump on. Go on iTunes. Go on YouTube. Let us know who wins the Battle Royale in a fight to the death in the ocean. Is it me with the head of a polar bear, the body of a beaver, and the special abil- ability of venomous spikes of a platypus? Does Patrick's Nile crocodile with a Bruno's shooting venom frog and the head of a hyena take the cake? Yeah. Or <laughs> does does Peter's hippo head with a lobster tail attached to it? A lobster special, claws. Lobster and the, claws. And the special ability of an immortal uh. jellyfish having a leg up. Let us know. Do the voting thing. Give us some five stars. You guys know how it goes. Ritep, you're up for the closer. Oh, wait. And real quick, too. We are looking for one special Brosner. To, uh, to, to come on board. Uh, we're still figuring out how we're going to work it, but we hit us up if you are interested in going through all 80 <laughs> podcasts and creating a master list of the Battle Royales. Yeah. Uh, there's Sounds more exciting. announcements coming, but if you're interested in coming on board, let us know. There's uh, a reason we'll figure for something it. Out. We'll, we'll tell you there's a reason yes, for it. Yes, exactly. Place. Yeah. Go to the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info at wildtimespod for all the socials. And uh, check out the Patreon where there are many, many more. I think we're up to like 15, 16, 15 bonus pods on there. So 15 hours more of uh, podcasts. A lot yeah, of for, shit. for a month, we do AMAs. We do all sorts of shit that we can't do on YouTube or Apple Podcasts. We uh, ate everything at Taco Bell. Everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything. It's Forrest's biggest achievement. It yeah. is. Yeah, it is. It's and it will be forever. Do check out the Patreon, the Wild Times Podcast Patreon. We love you guys. That link is patreon.com forward slash wild times pod. To get right there, there will, will have been one in this video somewhere. You can click on it and in the description. Check it out. Pat, say goodnight. Good night. Good night. <laughs> what, where, what part of the brain told you to do that for us? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to do something funny. The antimagnetic. <laughs> Works for me.